You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us now uh, Jesse Thistle, who's a finalist for High Plains Book Award. Uh, I, I'd like to maybe talk about the book in a minute, but first maybe Jesse, you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, my name is Jesse Thistle. I'm uh, the author of From the Ashes. Uh, I'm broadcasting from Hamilton, Ontario, which is Haudenosaunee territory. I myself am Métis Cree from Northern Saskatchewan. My people are Royal Allowance Métis and Cree. And uh, we fought against Canada with Louis Riel. And uh, the, the, the fallout of our resistance was that we had our land taken from us. We were pushed into the margins of society onto the sides of roads or railways where they would allow for roads in between homesteads. And so that's where the name Road Allowance come from. That's who I am and that those are who my people are. Road Allowance Métis. Yeah, it's a, it's a term I'd never heard of. Uh, it, it certainly didn't leave people much room to, to live. I don't know, what's the Road Allowance? Maybe 60 feet, you know, uh, 20 meters or something. Yeah, it's 66 yeah. feet, actually. Like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's so, where you had to establish your home and your gardens and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Squatting on public land, you know, and uh, yeah, they made do of it, though they were tough, my ancestors and my mom and her people. So, you know, yeah, it's off to them. Well, it's, it's a very interesting little tidbit. Um, I'm going to try to include some information maybe later in the credits that uh, uh, we can refer to so that people can look that up. Um, Tell us about your book. So my book is a memoir. It's called From the Ashes. Uh, I don't know the second part of the, the title. I'm, I don't have it memorized because to me, it's just From the Ashes. But it's, it's my experience of being Métis, homeless, and finding my way. And that's exactly what the book talks about. Like I, uh, Part of a social phenomenon where Indigenous kids were placed elsewhere out of their family units and I was lucky to have been raised in Brampton by my grandparents who were white but I was taken out of my community nonetheless and so the book is about me being disconnected culturally dislocated and trying to find my way in an urban landscape in the east and uh, how I become homeless addicted and uh, eventually find my way out of it through higher education the justice system and the love of a good woman. And that's what the book is about. <laughs> I, I loved a, a phrase, uh, I'm wondering if it was on your website, talking about the use of academic research as a means of healing. Yes, yes. So my book is uh, written in a literary fashion, so it reads like a novel, but a lot of the concepts that appear in the book are actually rooted in acad academics around homelessness, addictions, displacements, uh, history. All these things are interspersed throughout the book and they appear in different ways, but I don't explain them. I just immerse the, the reader into my world so that they can understand what these academic concepts actually are and what they look like from the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Well, one of the things you talk about uh, within your book, I believe, is the idea of intergenerational trauma. Yes. So for those that don't know intergenerational trauma, I guess they would say it's inheritable PTSD, so post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, hypervigilance, um, physical manifestations of trauma within like cells and DNA. They say epigenetics happens. Uh, there's changes in thyroid, so real, real uh, physical change. But then uh, there's a socialization aspect to it too. So you learn what you know from your previous generation that raises you. And if they're traumatized and dysfunctional, 
then there's going to be a lot of reactions to stress that are passed down through your family line, through the socialization of your people. And so I believe more strongly in the second uh, definition of an intergenerational trauma being passed down uh, through socialization. But there are other people that believe in uh, the physical um, manifestations of trauma, intergenerational trauma in our physicality. But we have to make sure that we don't uh, fall into eugenic or uh, the pathologization of uh, native biology as prone to uh, trauma. Uh, that's why I steer away from the other one. But like, it expresses itself in things like addiction, homelessness, social malfunction, uh, all the issues that we see in indigenous societies today, most of them have roots in historic trauma and intergenerational trauma passed down through generations. Apart from, you know, the lack of funding and all, all whatever else goes with just the way that our governments are not treating our indigenous peoples the way that they do. The rest of Americans are Canadians. Um, so that's what intergenerational trauma is. Um. You've, you've been working with this, uh, uh, these themes for quite a while. There was a, a, a lovely little, a very short uh, video that you did, a little documentary, I guess, uh, that uh, was about remembering uh, with Martha, Martha Stigman. Yeah. Could you tell us just a little bit about that? I, I find it very, I thought it really was a very interesting film. Sure. So um, in North America, America or Canada, we have what are called meta narratives to the foundation of our country. And so here in the North in Canada, we have something similar to the US frontier myth that like as the states pushed West and North, they encountered frontier and out of this frontier came like high liberalism uh, the freedom of expression of owning your own land. And this is what the American fiber is based on. And so in Canada, we have like pioneer mythology that does something similar. And so what that history does as it approaches, it's dominant and it wipes out other uh, strands of history that are competing against it. And primarily for me, it was indigenous history of my people, right? That got wiped away with the settling of the West. And so it further happened to me when I was taken out of my, my kin group in Saskatchewan and placed in a, a white home. Uh, and I didn't know myself as an indigenous person. And I never learned anything about indigenous history at all because I'm raised within the metropole. I'm raised within the colonial power that mythologizes this pioneer myth. And so I go to these like kind of places uh, called Black Black Creek Pioneer Village where kids could play pioneers and I loved it, right? Like every kid, but like I didn't quite fit in there because that's not a narrative for my people. You know, that was what was used to displace my people. And uh, yeah, that's what the film is about, the power of uh, reclamation of narrative too, because when we know that there's this deeper indigenous history, we can reassert that. You know, we can take agency and, and kind of fight against this dominant pioneer uh, narrative that's out there. The myth goes that they, the pioneers came, they broke uh, the land, they tilled the area, settled their, uh, their homestead, and, you know, they did that through sheer will of, you know, their, their hands and labor but it really neglects the fact that they were helped, you know, they, they had to have been helped by indigenous people, the medicines, the foods, learning to hunt wild game while you're clearing the land, you know, these are all concepts and things that they learned and worked with indigenous people. And on a lot of those ranches, a lot of those early farm hands and cowboys were actually first nations and Métis, uh, you know, Bronco riders and, uh, guys that rode steers and all kinds of stuff like that. So it's part of the history, you know, that just gets erased by these uh, these pioneer myths. Sure. Well, who would you say would be a good audience for this book? Who might like to read it? Well, I think anybody who wants to learn 
about the urban indigenous experience in the, the 80s and 90s. Uh, it's a really, uh, really clear narrative of the power of being dispossessed of your culture and what happened to uh, uh, indigenous adoptees. So I was among thousands and thousands, right? And the end result in many cases was homelessness, addiction, and intergenerational trauma. But also it, it charts a path out of there too. Ch charts a path off the streets, you know? And I'm, I didn't do it by pulling up my bootstraps. I did it because there was a series of institutions and people that loved me back into the circle. So anyone who's looking for hope, who has relatives who are suffering from addiction or trauma or homelessness. And I'm not trying to sell false hope. I'm just saying that, you know, here's my story. This is what happened to me. Hopefully you can take something out of that for your own life. And so it's got a very specific yet broad audience too. Well, I, I really uh, appreciate the time you've taken with us today. This has uh, just been great to meet you. And, yeah, uh, it's been great to meet you too. Yeah. Well, if, if you get down to Billings, please uh, let us know, you know. We'll, yeah, we'll, sure. We'll have you at the store or whatever. Yeah, it'd be great. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. Take care. Sure. Take care. Bye-bye. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.